Hello everybody, my name is Zach. I am president of Yukon Kodama Taiko and director of the East Coast Taiko Conference. We are really excited to host this year's conference. Thank you so much for watching this video. A little bit about myself, I've been playing Taiko for about three and a half years. I'm excited to be part of this club and a fun fact about me, I've been hang gliding before. And now to introduce another prominent member of ECTC and another fun fact about him, we have Stuart Payton with us. Hi. Let's see, I grew up in Tokyo. My taiko age is 35, and I'm a member of Burlington Taiko. Um, and I started with uh, Tanaka Seiji Sensei and San Francisco Taiko Dojo. Started with him in 1984. Um, and we just hosted Ringo Matsuri here in, you know, just, just south of Burlington, Vermont. We had 90 taiko players from 11 taiko groups, I think. Wow. Um, it was a casual and warm gathering. It took place in an apple orchard. All right. So, Stuart, we have a couple questions for you to get the audience to know you a little bit. Um, so the first thing, you've been to a lot of ECTCs. You've been a really big, prominent figure in ECTCs in the past. So can you tell the audience what's one thing that stands out to you as a really memorable moment of a past East Coast taiko conference? A specific moment. I'm gonna to have to think about that, um, but the the fellowship at ECTCs, I think, is a really potent aspect of the gathering. And um, being able to see Tycho friends and Tycho acquaintances from you know from from the region, but also other parts of the world too, other parts of the Tycho world, um, that's a really cool thing. And I gotta say, the the merchant room is is a big plus. Yes, something really exciting to have that community building aspect of, of the conference. So, what's one one aspect of this conference that you're really looking forward to this year and every year um, to try and get with that community? I like the the connections that more experienced Taiko people have with newer Taiko people. And um, the the sharing of information, um, and I like the uh, I, I'm looking forward to the open-minded sharing of you know topics like taiko technique, drum making technique. I'm really excited about um, preparing skins for taiko too. Awesome, we're excited to have you, Stuart. And so so one more follow-up question we have about ACTC is. is what is one thing that, you know, you've been to a lot of ECTCs, so what's one thing that you've seen in the past that you think is going to change this year and you're excited to really push that change and you think that's going to really develop this conference? Let's see. I think for, for ECTC, it would be awesome to have more volunteers um, coming from off campus and from out of state. Um, coming to ECTC specifically to volunteer their time. Because um, I think that would be a wonderful currency to bring to ECTC. It would be fantastic. And, and one, one aspect our group has really focused on throughout this planning process is making sure all of the equipment is taken well care of. Uh, we know it's a really large conference and it's really difficult to make sure all the equipment is well taken care of, but of course it's very important to us. Um, how much of a priority is that for you as someone who brings a lot of equipment to ECTC, and uh, what are some things that you know you're looking forward to for, for working with ECTC to try and make sure everything's taken care of? Yeah, I think you know each ECTC it's a different crew um, dealing with the equipment, and um, I think that I think there's room for uh, a gently more proactive, um, you know, conver proactive conversations about moving the equipment. And you know, different groups have different protocols for how their equipment is moved. And my experience is that um, a percentage of the crews moving the drums end up having less and less sleep towards the end of the conference. And I think that influences executive function and more volunteers. Yes, we'd love to have volunteers. And we're excited to be partnering with the University of Connecticut's Asian American Cultural Center. They'll be doing an event with us and they'll be helping us a lot with volunteers. So to anyone who's watching, thank you for that. 
So you talked a little bit about connecting expert and more advanced taiko players with beginners. So do you have any words of advice maybe for budding taiko players just in regards to playing taiko or even why they should go to ECTC? Let's see. Um, there's, to me, I, I think there are different aspects of taiko. You know, there's, there's the rhythm, there's the hand order, there's the choreography, there's the technique, there's the stance, there's the equipment, there's where on the drum you hit, the angle of the bachi, the weight of the bachi to match the drum. Um, there's so many categories in taiko. And um, my experience is that we all focus on some of those. And I think ECTC is a great time to discover which categories are less visible to us. Um, and then seeing if we can find sources of, sources of information, sources of conversation um, about those topics. And if there was more to the question, I've already forgotten it. <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I think you're all set, Stuart. Thank you so much. Um, um, Zach. Yeah, no, we're really excited to have both beginners and advanced players. You know, one of the greatest parts about ECTC really on our aspect is my first ECTC. I felt really welcome. And in this last ECTC, I know it's also going to be fantastic. So it's a great place for both beginners and advanced uh, Taiko players. So I'm really excited about that. Cool. I, I am too. And um, your Taiko group could be the next host or one of the next hosts for ECTC. And now is a good time to start thinking about it. Um, reach out to UConn. Thanks, UConn, for being ECTC 2020. Um, reach out to them. Um, Taiko Community Alliance is also helping, um, you know, coaching the ECTC hosts. And you could do some research right now on campus to figure out if you can be the host for 22, 21. It's a really exciting opportunity. And, and we will discuss this more at ECTC. So be sure to be there if you're interested in hosting it. So we have a little bit of a left field question. What is the most unusual place you have ever played Taiko? Most unusual place. Uh, I guess part of my life is going past my eyes. Um, let's see. One of them was um, in eastern Vermont. Uh, we, we played for a, a big celebration near Woodstock. Uh, we played in between standing stones. Um, with this Odaiko, this Odaiko, and um, it was a big grassy field, and we had to go 20 feet down into a pit. Um, and the gig was a blast. There were fire dancers, and we discovered that once the dew started to stick to the grass, it was really hard to push the Odaiko out of this pit. It was a very steep incline. <laughs> um, so that was cool. That's pretty mighty impressive. Yeah, we have our own difficulty moving our Odaiko across grass. So our Odaiko is not nearly as large though. So I can emphasize at least. So, you know, let's see, find a, find a, a grant or a, a credit card with a, you know, a lot of room and, you know, you can buy or make a really big Odaiko too. <laughs> That's our plan, right? <laughs> you guys should do that. Stuart Payton improved. Um, so now, now one thing we really want to focus on is we are in the great state of Vermont. Uh, Stuart, you're based out of Burlington Tyco. How long have you been in Burlington? I've been in Burlington since 1985, and we started Burlington Tyco uh, a year later. That's awesome. So this place has been running for quite a while. What is one way you really try to integrate your Tyco group into the community? We try to do events... Um, you know, how do I say this? Events in the community on a annual or every other year basis. And one of them is our Ringo Matsuri that we do in the orchard on odd numbered years. Um, and we're also, uh, we also have a parade group and I do free two hour workshops um, here at the dojo, maybe three times a year. And anyone in the community who takes that workshop then they're on our parade email list. So, you know, we're trying to end up with a couple hundred people on our parade list so that when we get a parade gig, we can send the email out and have, 
you know, 30 to 200 people in our parade. And I think casual involvement with a minimum of time involvement is one way to connect with community. And we've also in the past done um, a Yukinko Matsuri, um, you know, what is it, Snow Child Festival, where we went to a, um, a very small ski area and we all played taiko outdoors when it was 20 degrees. Um, that was a blast in a foot and a half of powder snow. Um, wow. And then we're also um, in touch with the orchard to do something when the blossoms are open um, this coming spring. That's fantastic. So, so that, that question about powder snow inspires me. Assuming you would not damage any of the equipment, would you rather go skiing down a slope in a naname stand, go snowboarding on a chichibu stand, or go running down the hill on top of a rolling odaiko? <laughs> so you said snowboarding on a chichibu stand? That, that feels pretty safe or pretty sedentary. I don't know how, how f we would need a steep slope. <laughs> um, True. Let's see. As a final act in this universe, I think <laughs> rolling down the hill on an odaiko has potential. Um, it would be pretty sweet. That would be, yeah. be a good way to go. I like really soft rubber boots and maybe an odaiko on a, a, a drum with nails rather than you know, a large okedo because my foot would get stuck in the strap. I'd like to go further down the hill before my final face plant. <laughs> This is what we're doing. Uh, we're coming back in after ECTC. The day later, we're going to be rolling down a Nodaiko on a Vermont snowscape. So be prepared for that to not happen. So we have uh, a couple more questions for you, still staying with the Vermont theme. What's your favorite Ben & Jerry's flavor? My favorite Ben & Jerry's flavor... Um, <sighs> coffee, coffee, buzz, 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 which isn't made anymore. But um, we used to be able to buy factory seconds. So all the mistakes from the factory would end up in, in pints. You could get them for a dollar and a quarter um, at local gasoline stations. And after finishing a conga drumming gig at a ski area two hours away in the middle of the winter, um, I would buy two of those factory seconds. I bought the factory seconds because coffee, coffee, buzz, buzz, buzz. They made it with too much coffee liqueur and it wouldn't freeze. Um, and so because there was too much alcohol in there, but also because there was so much coffee in there, I had no problem, no problem staying awake on my drive home in the blizzard. And yeah, that, that was, that's my favorite. I'll have to try it. I'm going to have a long drive home back to Connecticut. So I might have to try and look out for some coffee ice cream. If you had to add to the repertoire, what's one ice cream that you would create and add to the Ben and Jerry's repertoire? Wow, let's see. Well, um, I, I would like to welcome back the, the, the nutmeg ice cream that they used to make where we had breakfast today at Penny Clouse. Mm -hmm. That used to be the, the second location for Ben & Jerry's. So in the basement there, they used to do experimental flavors. And so I really like the, the nutmeg. Um, I think uh, it's a matter of time before we have a pint of CBD Ben & Jerry's. Um, Ringo Matsuri was yesterday. That was a really fantastic event that, that brings together the community um, in a really informal and fun way. ECTC is a longer event, of course. It takes up a whole weekend as opposed to the day. And one of the aspects is it has a big final concert that brings together groups uh, from across the East Coast, really from across the country in a performance. Do you have one performance from a past conference that stuck out to you? Hmm. Well, it was fun playing Odaiko, you know, on the other side of Tiffany Tamaribuchi. Um, and I, you know, I've en I, I enjoyed seeing all the different Taiko personalities and techniques on the Odaiko as the different instructors played. Um, I think the I think the jam on the welcoming first evening um, is also an exclamation point. Um, and you're asking me for specific memories. I'm, I'm still looking. No worries. I know for me personally, you can go on YouTube. Uh, 
Joe Small, who is another one of our wonderful workshop leaders at this ECTC 2020, his group, Swarthmore Tycho, performed Propel, uh, which is a song that he wrote at ECTC 2019 in Cornell. And uh, that, for me, was a really, really fascinating performance. Um, if you guys are interested, it's very percussion heavy. It's very cool. You can find him and Isaku Kageyama uh, was also featured in that performance. That's one, one aspect for me that really stands out to the concert and is really exciting for me when we're talking about ECTC. We're back with Stuart Payton. Stuart, one really unique thing about your, uh, your group and your Daiko, you've utilized a really unique tool to build some of your practice drums. So what inspired you to build these drums this way? Let's see. Um, we were looking for something that was lighter weight. Um, we used to use PVC pipe this diameter, and it was really heavy. And um, I, I go to elementary schools and, you know, watching a, a third grader have a hard time carry it. And I, I, I was worried for their toes. And um, so this ADS drainage pipe is nice and lightweight. Um, kids can help me unload into a gym. They enjoy rolling it across the gym floor because um, all, the, all the screws are hidden inside the ridge, you know, inside the space here. Um, we've made a, a five foot diameter practice old dike using the same, same material. And it's been a great surface for our Taiko students to practice on. Um, many Taiko players um, that I've met have some sort of budget limit for their equipment. And I wanted 40 instruments to be able to take to schools and um, this is great because we put a skin on just one end and I can fit multiple size drums inside each other and get all the equipment that I want to a gig in an E-150 van. Did I answer your question? Yeah, no, this is great. Drainage pipe is a really unique solution and one thing you'll find at ACTC is a lot of new innovative ideas. And when you talk with Stuart and you talk with a lot of other members of the community, there might be things that you haven't thought of. So if you're looking for an affordable way to get more uh, Tyco with your group or anything else, uh, ECTC is a really great space to kind of spread ideas and to learn new things about Tyco. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So we have a couple of just final questions for you. Stuart, it is a tradition at Yukon Kodama Tyco. Whenever we talk to a, a new member, a guest, a workshop instructor, to ask this, this all important question, have you ever been to Hawaii? <laughs> Let's see, the answer is yes. Um, when our family was going from US to Japan by boat in 1966, apparently we stopped in Hawaii for three days. And I think I was, what, 10 or 11 months old. And so my twin brother and I, we, we don't remember. But we were there. But it counts. But it counts. That's fantastic. So to uh, kind of close up the interview, um, again, thank you so much for talking with us. This has been really fun. Again, Stuart Payton is in Burlington, Vermont. Is there anything else you'd like to say about yourself or your group to the audience? Hmm. That's a really good question. Let's see. Do you have any upcoming performances in October or November that you'd love people in the area to come see? Well, we have a parade gig on New Year's Eve. Um, and we are hoping to invite Tiffany Tamaribuchi to do a taiko baka in our dojo again. Exciting. So where can everybody stay tuned for news about Burlington Taiko or you? Do you guys have a website or a Facebook page? We have website, website and Facebook, um, burlingtontaiko.org, and you can find us on Facebook. And we're also good with word of mouth. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Stuart. This has been great. I hope you guys are looking forward to having Stuart Payton as much as I am at ECTC 2020. So please stay tuned for more workshop leader announcements. Thank you. Thank you, Stuart. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Yukon. Volunteer for ECTC 20.